Good day. Welcome to part 12 of this 52-week series on what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in this space. My name is Scott Forsyth and today I'm covering app domains, what they are and why it is important that you understand them. So if you're a web administrator managing ASP.NET sites in any way, it is important that you're aware of what this mysterious object, these app domains are. So let's jump right in. At a high level, app domains are a boundary set up by ASP.NET. And so while they're specific to ASP.NET, and classic ASP has something similar, uh, they are controlled and triggered by IIS itself. So let's take a look to get started here at this image. Notice in this example I have four application pools, and Contosa.com is in its own application pool, and it has a sub-app. We have Acme.com without a sub-app, and then in application pool 3 is really a shared application pool with multiple sites, in this case six sites and three of them are marked as applications and we also have vastnet.com as an example here as well. So let's look at this in IIS to see it from another angle. And so if we go to IIS and into our application pools, notice the list of application pools here and notice the list of applications within each app pool. So an app domain is really a silent container that you don't see too much visibility into usually. And for the most part, ASP.NET has a one-to-one -one mapping of an application to an app domain, although in theory they're really different. Now if we go to, let's say, contosa.com, let's the subdir, and let's actually convert to an application. So we'll convert that to an application. It's going to drop it into the same app pool. And we're going to hit OK. Go back to the app pools, hit F5 to refresh. Notice that the contosa.com now has two applications. And if I view the applications, uh, you can see that there's two of them here. So now we see just a little bit of awareness, and this is contosa.com. Go back to the screenshot. Now what we've set up is this situation here, where we have the root of the site, we have the sub app, which is actually in its own application as well. Okay, so why does this matter? Why do we care? And here's what's really important now, is when those containers are recycled, what happens? So there's really two things that are affected when an app domain or an app pool is recycled. So if an app pool is recycled, we lose all app domains in it. But it's also possible to recycle an individual app domain. And I'll show you how to do this. Not only is it possible, it actually happens a lot more than many people realize. And there is an impact. So there's two main things that happen as a result. One is there's a first hit performance penalty whenever an app domain is spun up. Any interpreted code has to be compiled and there's going to be a first hit performance for pretty well anything there. Additionally, the other impact that you're going to see is any information stored in that app domain is lost. And the most common is in-process session state that you may use. Uh, by default, session state is stored in proc or in process, which means it is actually contained within the app domain that hosts it. So if the app pool is recycled, you lose any in proc memory. And if the app domain is recycled, you lose any app domain uh, any memory. So actually let's test this out so we can see it in action. So we're going to go to, let's go contosa.com and explore. And I'll speed up the video here, but what I'm going to do, and you can pause it if you want to, is create a way that we can test session variables. Okay, if I didn't make any mistakes, this should work. So what I'm going to do is go to contosa.com slash session1. And what this did is it wrote a session variable into memory. Now I have to go to a second page for it to really use that information properly. And so refresh this. Now notice if I hit F5, the time is stamped with the time here from a few seconds ago. Okay, so this information that you have here is loaded from the session information. If I hit F5, notice it doesn't change because it's not the current time, it's a time that was stamped when I was on page one. For example, if I go back to page one, I love this test, it works really handy, it's going to reset that time. I go to page two, 9.45 and 25 seconds, a refresh and it's stuck. So now what we have is a great way to test an app domain recycle. So first let's do it at the top level. Let's blow away this entire application pool. And we can do that by going to our app pools. We're going to go to Contoso. We'll right click and we recycle. 
Okay, in a future video I'm going to cover this in more depth. But we now, if I do a refresh, notice that the information is blown away because it lived within that app domain. Okay, so we'll go back to page one, write it, back to page two, stamp it. So now it's stuck, it's in session state. So let's look at a few examples here. And here's where it's important to understand, as an administrator, if we understand every way that an app domain can be recycled, we know what to prevent, what things should be done in off hours versus done during prime time, etc. So I'm going to go here and we're going to touch it. Basically I'm going to add a space and save. I'll go back here, hit a 5, look at that, it blew away. So the app domain here, contosa.com, was blown away simply by touching the web.config file. And that becomes one of your mechanisms. If you ever have a problem with a site and you want to touch just one aspect of it, uh, now be careful and I'll show you here how the sub-application is going to be affected if we do this as well. But that's how you can do that. Now actually Notepad doesn't even require you to add the space. I can just hit Control S. Every time I hit Control S in Notepad it will recycle that app domain. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Any application folders will within it for ASP.NET will be blown away. And you have a few of those. And so one of them is called bin, and then the other ones all start with uh, so app code, for example. And there's app themes, app data, app global resources, app local resources, app web, app web resources, and app browsers. Seven in total. Actually make that eight. So seven that start with the app underscore, and then we have our eighth one, which is the bin folder. Any time any of those folders are touched, are touched in any way, we're going to lose the session state. Again, see this? It's gone. So let's reset it again and prep. If we go to the bin folder, and let's just create a file. That's all we're going to do. We create a file. Refresh. Gone. Okay. And additionally, so keep in mind there, any application folders will blow away the session state. Also, if we add any kind of folder of any type, Fresh. Oh, let me set up this test again. Okay, we have it set up here. And let's just delete our new folder. We'll go back, refresh, it's gone. That's new with ASP.NET 2.0. Many people don't realize this. Is you just create a simple folder and you've blown away your session state. And so that's why it's actually important if you can store your session state out of process. Uh, but as an administrator, you want to be really careful what kind of testing you do because you can actually have a larger impact on people's sites than you realize. Okay, let's set this up again and let's look at another example. Let's go to our website, contosa.com, and let's go to our default documents. Let's move index.asp up. Let's say yes, and we'll move this up to the top. And let's go and refresh this. Ouch, look at this. So just making a change to our default document has somehow caused an app domain recycle. So why is this? And I'll show you why this is is, and this is called the distributed configuration, again another week I'm going to cover this in more depth, but we see that it's the site's web.config that was touched when this change occurred. See, so we'll go in here to web.config and notice that the default document changes are actually applied to the web config, which is the same as touching the web.config file. Now let me show two other important things to keep in mind. So page one, let's go, we're going to refresh this. Now some global level settings. Let's go to two of our global config folders, and actually let's see which framework version am I in. Notice this, of course, impacts just the framework version I'm in. Contosa.com, version 2.0, and I am in 64-bit mode. So let's go to that framework version, and we'll go to Microsoft.net, framework 64, for 2.0, config, and if we go to web.config, so first of all, let's go back, let's confirm. The variable is still there. Now, if I go to the config, web.config, and let's touch our global configuration. For example, let's change our trust. If we were to change it, I won't really. Let's save this, though. Apply and refresh. Notice we've blown away that app domain when we touch the global web.config. Really important to keep in mind. That means global changes can affect this. But this will not be impacted if we change the app, the app host. If 
config app host. And this one here, if we can make any change we want within here, and it doesn't blow it away. So it's important to keep in mind that global ASP.NET pages will blow it away. The application host, the app host will not. Let's look at the slide and I jotted down some things to keep in mind. An entire app pool recycle or a server reset or a reboot, of course, will blow away our app domain. Touching web.config will. Touching anything in an application folder will. Adding or deleting entire folders will. And if you do too many files, it also will. In any IIS setting that affects the app pool, so if you make app pool level changes, that's going to blow away the app pool, including all the app domains in it. And any IIS setting that affects web.config, we saw the default documents, uh, compression, some of those settings will cause an entire app domain recycle. Our root, machine.config or web.config, as I just showed, and also some failures will cause app domain or app pool recycles at various levels. So those are all things to keep in mind. So there we have it, an app domain, what it is, and it is important for an administrator to be aware because you can actually impact a site by making changes at various levels and it's important to know. And if you test certain upgrades, the question is always for you, is that going to have an impact on existing production sites or not? And understanding the existence of an app domain and how you can test it is very helpful in this way. Hope you found that useful, and I hope you come back again next week. We have more in store. Thanks a lot.